Now that we have this basic understanding of what is a multi-step reaction and what is an elementary reaction, let's now use that understanding to calculate integrated rate law expressions for a simple two-step reaction. And so in this case, what we have is this restriction enzyme, ECORI, and what it does is catalyzes the cleavage of DNA. And so what we start with is some supercoiled DNA, and then that becomes this open circle DNA, which then finally results in linear DNA. And so what we're going to do then is we want to calculate the integrated rate law expressions for these three components. And to do so, what we're going to do is, for this example, we're going to assume that each of these steps are elementary reactions and that the reverse reactions are very slow. And then if we start with some initial conditions, in this case if we start with only um, the supercoiled DNA, and then we have no open circle or linear DNA, we're going to then determine the integrated rate law expressions for these three components. Our strategy for this will involve solving two or for two of the rate law expressions, and then using these initial conditions, we're then going to be able to solve for the third one. And so just to do with the setup, all three of these integrated rate law expressions look like this. We have the rate of change of our supercoiled DNA with respect to time, and what that equals to is the negative of the first rate constant times the concentration of the supercoiled DNA. For a second rate law expression, this has to do with the open circle DNA, and this one is going to be a combination of we have it coming in from the, the supercoiled DNA, and so we have some rate constant, the KF1 times the supercoiled DNA, and from that I'm going to subtract off, this is the consumption of the open circle DNA to linear DNA, and so that's the second rate constant times the open circle DNA. And then finally I have the rate of change of the linear DNA with respect to time, and that's simply equal to the second rate constant times the concentration of the open circle DNA, because this is then the consumption of the open circle to become the linear DNA. The final thing that we can actually write about this is that we can say that in our system we have a total amount of stuff in the system and that's basically determined by the amount of the supercoiled DNA that we start with. And so at all times in the system then we have the concentration of the supercoiled plus the concentration of the open circle plus the concentration of the linear DNA must equal to this initial amount of supercoiled DNA that we started with in the system. And so now we have this, this series of four equations that we can use, and we're really just trying to solve for what is this concentration of SUP, this concentration of open circle, and this concentration of linear. And so the strategy that we're going to employ is that we're going to solve two of these differential equations, namely this first one and the second one, because once we do, then in this fourth equation that we have down here, we can actually solve for the, the linear DNA by just saying, well, that's just the original amount of the supercoiled DNA minus the supercoiled DNA at any given time t minus the concentration of the open circle DNA at time t. And we find both of these, like the supercoiled at any time t and the open circle at any time t by basically just solving for equation 1 and equation 2. So this is the strategy that we're going to employ to solve for the three integrated rate law expressions, one for each of these components. So let's put this strategy into practice. Let's solve the integrated rate law expression for this first equation, where we're going to find this concentration of the supercoiled DNA. So that's D concentration of supercoiled by DT, and that's equal to the negative of the first rate constant times the concentration of the supercoiled DNA at any given time t. I'm going to divide both sides by the concentration of the supercoiled DNA and multiply both sides by dt. And what that gives me is the d concentration of supercoiled divided by the concentration of supercoiled. And that's equal to the negative of the first rate constant times dt. And if I integrate both sides, on my right hand side I'm going to integrate between 0 and t. On my left hand side, I'm going to integrate between the initial concentration of the supercoiled DNA, and then the upper bound is my concentration of my supercoiled DNA at a given time t. And what that leaves me with is, on the left hand side, the natural logarithm of 
supercoil DNA evaluated between the initial concentration of supercoil DNA and the concentration of supercoil DNA at a given time t. And on my right hand side I have negative of the first rate constant times t and this will be evaluated between 0 and t. After I apply my fundamental theorem of calculus what I get is my natural logarithm of my supercoiled DNA minus the natural logarithm of my initial amount of supercoiled DNA and on my right hand side I have the negative of the first rate constant times t minus 0. I continue to simplify on my left hand side I have the natural logarithm of the supercoiled DNA divided by the initial concentration of the supercoiled DNA and that's equal to on the left hand side the negative of the first rate constant times t. Finally I can then solve for the concentration of supercoiled DNA by taking the exponent on both sides that eliminates my natural logarithm so I have my concentration of supercoiled DNA and that's equal to e raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant times t and then if I multiply both sides by the concentration or the initial concentration of my supercoiled DNA then I get the concentration of the supercoiled DNA being equal to the initial concentration times e raised to the power of negative kf1 times t. So we've now solved for this first one. We're now going to do this second one. And so to solve for this one I'm going to employ a slightly different strategy than we've been using before to solve integrated rate law expressions. And I'll show you that in a second. First of all, let's just write out our differential equation where we have the rate of change of the open circle DNA with respect to time and that's equal to the first rate constant times the supercoiled DNA minus the second rate constant times the open circle DNA. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this second term, the whole thing, I'm just going to just add that term to both sides. And so what that leaves me with is I've got my rate of change of my open circle DNA with respect to time and to that I'm going to add the second rate constant times the concentration of open circle DNA and that's equal to the first rate constant times the concentration of the supercoiled DNA. Now the first substitution I'm going to do is that we actually have a solution already for this concentration for supercoiled DNA for all time t and so I'm actually just going to plug that right in. So I've got on my left hand side my concentration of my open circle DNA, the derivative of it with respect to time, plus the second rate constant times the concentration of open circle DNA, and that's equal to the first rate constant times my initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times E raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant times time. The second substitution I'm going to make is that I'm going to multiply both sides by a factor of e raised to the power of the second rate constant times time. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can very easily solve for the integral here on the left hand side. And so let me demonstrate how that's going to be true. So let's pretend that the answer to that integral once I eventually do it to the left hand side, well that's equal to the concentration of open circle DNA times e raised to the power of the second rate constant times time. And so then to test this, if this is actually the antiderivative, then let's take the derivative of this thing with respect to time. What does that give me? Well, I would have to apply the product rule to this because both these factors, they are both varying in time. So I would have to say the first times the derivative of the second, so the first is the concentration of open circle DNA, times the derivative of the second, so I get a factor of the second rate constant pulled down, and that's times e to the raised to the power of the second rate constant times time, and to that I'm going to add the second times the derivative of the first. So the second is e raised to the power of the second rate constant times time, and that's times the derivative with respect to time of the first term, so d, d concentration of open circle DNA by dt. Well these two terms that I have over here that I've just written out, these two terms are exactly what I have written down over here on the left hand side after I distribute in this factor of e raised to the power of the second rate constant times time. And so what I can actually do then at this point is I can say that this left hand side, well that's equal to 
d by dt applied to the concentration of open circle DNA times e raised to the power of kf2 times time. On my right hand side, I would still write the concentration of supercoiled DNA or the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times the first rate constant times e raised to the power of the second rate constant minus the first rate constant because all I'm doing is that I'm just joining together these two exponential terms and when I multiply two exponential terms then it's the same as summing or subtracting their exponents and that's going to be multiplied by time. And then at this point, this is now where I'm going to apply that, that integral. I'm going to do the integration. And so on my left-hand side, I have an integral. On my left-hand side, or my right-hand side, I'm going to be applying an integral from 0 to t. And I do the same thing on my left-hand side. However, this integral on the left-hand side is now very straightforward. Because what I'm doing is I'm applying an integral to a differential term. I have my integral term, and then I'm going to immediately be doing a differential to it. And that's the same thing as saying, I'm going to add some value, and then I'm going to subtract that same value from it. Whatever integration does, differentiation undoes. And so essentially what I have on my left-hand side is then just the concentration of open circle DNA raised, or E raised to the power of the second rate constant times time, is what the result of that integration and then immediate differentiation is. On my right-hand side, I would evaluate this integral as I normally would. And so I'm going to have concentration of supercoiled DNA, or at least the initial concentration, times the first rate constant. And really where this integral applies is to this exponential term. And the antiderivative to this exponential term means that I have a factor of the second rate constant minus the first rate, rate constant in the denominator of this fraction. And then I have e raised to the power of the second rate constant minus the first rate constant times time. And this is going to be evaluated between 0 and t. I will now apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to my right-hand side. And so what that gives me is my initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times the first rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant. And then here is where the application of the, the fundamental theorem of calculus will be done. I have e raised to the power of the second rate constant minus the first rate constant times t minus e raised to the power of 0. And of course, still on my left-hand side, I have my concentration of open circle DNA. And what I'll do at this point is I'll also just divide both sides. So I'll isolate from my concentration of open circle DNA, which means that I'll divide both sides by e raised to the power of the second rate constant times time, which means that on my right-hand side, I get e raised to the power of negative of the second rate constant times time. What I'm also going to do is I can also just immediately cross off this e raised to the power of 0, and I know that that's going to be equal to 1. And what that means is that then solving for my concentration of open circle DNA, that's now equal to my original concentration of supercoiled DNA times the first rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant times e raised to the power of the second rate constant minus the first rate constant times time minus 1. And that's multiplied by e raised to the power of the second, or the negative of the second rate constant times time. I'm going to do one more simplification step here on the right hand side, where I'm going to multiply in this, this exponential term that's outside the parentheses. And so what that leaves me with is the concentration of supercoiled DNA, or at least the initial concentration times the first rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant. And then when I multiply in this term into both of these terms, when I distribute it in, well, at least for this first exponential term, because I have minus kf2 times time, and here I have a kf2 times time, then what that does is that that basically cancels out that term. Because when you multiply two exponentials together, in this case, I'm going to subtract those two terms from each other. What that leaves me with is then that first term is just simply going to be e raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant times time. Completing the application of the distributive principle simply means that I'm just going to subtract off e raised to the power of the negative of the second rate constant times time.